We all use Netflix, YouTube, and many services that provide us on-demand video content. We will briefly discuss video streaming and content distribution networks that help bring these multimedia content to us. Video streaming is basically sending a pre-recorded video file on demand without waiting for full download before playback to the user. It constitutes almost 80% of current internet traffic. During the streaming, we can watch a movie, a video clip, a recorded sports or TV event, as soon as we want it, instead of waiting to be downloaded completely before watching. These pre-recorded video files are placed on servers and delivered to users on demand. There are many challenges associated with video streaming, among which scaling the service to meet the demands of billions of users and how to address the service to work effectively for different user needs are the most important. The questions are, what kind of server setup could address such a huge number of users? Can a centralized solution scale? What kind of services and user mobility and connection needs should the provider address? A solution to these problems are provided in a distributed application level infrastructure. However, to understand the solution, we first need to understand the video traffic itself to understand the requirements of the application, and then approach this application level infrastructure. Video is a sequence of images that are displayed to the user at a certain rate. For example, 24 images per second or 30 images per second. A digital image is an array of pixels where each pixel is represented by bits defining its color and luminance. These images that are displayed to the user per second to compose a video could be coded in bits in different ways. Higher data rates usually mean better video quality and viewer experience. Different techniques are incorporated to reduce the redundancy of information to limit the amount of data needed to display the same video with the same or slightly changed quality. Spatial coding reduces redundancy within one image. Instead of sending all values of the pixels that have the same color in an image, it finds all of them that have the same color and sends one color value for all, a number of times the same value is repeated. Temporal coding reduces redundancy among consecutive images. Instead of sending all values of the images, it sends differences from one image to the one following it in time. Video could be encoded in constant bitrate, with keeping the encoding parameters constant. It can alternatively happen in variable bitrate, where the rate changes as the spatial or temporal encodings changed. You can check different MPEG standards as popular encoding examples. The important aspect of video streaming for the network is the data it has to send across the network to the user for successful playout. For this, Usually, a certain throughput is required from the network for streaming. And as the throughput may vary, a way for the streaming service to adapt to the changes. For this purpose, we can use compression to create video files in different versions. Say, for example, 500 kilobits per second, 1 megabit per second, and 4 megabits per second. And switch among the encodings as the network throughput changes for the user. We will discuss how we can do Many of the video files we watch are streamed through HTTP. This means the video file is transferred as an HTTP object, which is then buffered and played at the client side. However, HTTP itself does not have any offering to adapt the rate or adjust quality of a streaming. Dash, which stands for Dynamic Adaptive Streaming over HTTP is a standard for HTTP-based streaming. In Dash, servers divide video files into multiple chunks. Each chunk, which is a video with a length of a few seconds, is encoded at different rates 
and each differently encoded chunk is stored in a different file with a different URL. A manifest file that provides the URLs for those different files is also stored at the server with all of the video files. When client wants to stream a video, it first requests the manifest file. Throughout the connection, the client monitors the bandwidth of its connection to the server and based on its device, as well as bandwidth information and the state of the buffer, dynamically chooses the maximum coding rate that works for the client device given the current bandwidth. Intelligence of Dash is at the client. The client decides what is the good file segment to request based on device and bandwidth. The client decides when to request a chunk so that playback buffer won't overflow or underflow. And the client decides where, based on the manifest file, to request the object file from. 